video so the, the content behind the video so just a, a brief what is CO then we'll wind up uh, uh, the concept behind CO is to explore uh, the internal parts organization of your computer okay and how it is working so what are exactly present in the inside of the box okay so those things will be discussed and learned in the computer organization tech section okay so this content is totally available in Maurice Mano. Already many times I told, so you can follow this book, which is available in our uh, Google Class. Everything is there in Google Class. Okay. So you need one material book, full book is there. Okay. Uh, so I am doing my best for you for learning. Okay. So please cooperate and read the book before come to the class, or at least read the PPT or the handwritten material. I have uploaded for you. Okay, so please read it before come to the class. Huh? So this is our uh, web page. So most probably all are joined except the two. Mm, fine. Next, uh, yeah, everybody know about me uh, and class also because we have done with uh, polling activity. So I'm not Sai Kumar or something like that. Okay, I'm Sasi Kumar Gurumurthy. Okay, just remember me. And our class is in Google Class. Uh, okay. And we have references. Okay, so you can go with these uh, references for um, more learning. And some of the additional learning resources also I have uploaded. You can do course in NPTEL, or you can do a Udemy or a Coursera. Okay, you can get certified. Okay. Mm. And what is CVO? So it was very simple. The concept behind CVO is okay instruction set architecture plus machine organization the CO is going to make the bridge between the hardware and the software okay so what are the instruction computer is simply we used to say it's a set of instruction tell to computer that is called as software okay so this instruction set how it's passing the information between the human and the machine Okay, you are going to ATM, you are using your debit card and you are punching in the machine, you are entering your password, then you are getting money. So what's happening between these two, the human in interaction with the computer? Okay. It's simply the concept behind how hardware and software working together in a team. Okay. So one is compiler system view, another view is logic designer view logic designer is your machine okay hardware your kitchen okay or your atm machine and instruction set design at the above interface that is compiler and system view okay so compiler everybody know that okay it's going to convert the human readable format into machine readable format okay? so whatever you are typing hi bye you are entering your password or something in your ATM machine. So that will be converted into machine readable form. Okay. So that's why we need CO. CO is going to combine the instruction set and machine organization. Okay. Machine organization, everybody know that input unit, output unit, in between CPU. In CPU, we have different parts, okay. memory unit, control unit, and automatic logic unit more than more than that we have many other spare parts you know? fine so we have another concept the machine language the machine wrong wage is uh, already told so machine language is always zeros and ones that's why people used to call computer is an stupid machine okay. so it's a stupid machine okay uh, one minute ah, i will come back mm.
the language of machine is always have the critical path so so that will be having uh, uh, minimum execution between the hardware and the software okay so that's why we need the know about the machine language okay what is the machine language how it is being uh, transferred from uh, uh, the user commands into the zeros and ones because computer is a stupid machine it know only binary values zeros and ones okay so all these instructions are directly we are feeding through keyboard or maybe a touch screen okay so the assembler and the, uh, other operations which is connected to the um, computer okay so which is executed one by one in the way of uh, uh, encoding so decoding and encoding okay so encoding and decoding is nothing so just you are typing assume that here so this is one zero to zero so this is you are typing that high so high will be converted like this okay so that is called as encoding okay? and it will be sending through wires so you are sending a whatsapp test high to your friend so immediately it will generate this kind of values we used to say it is ascii value okay american standard code for information and interchange okay so this will transmit through wires or maybe wi-fi or maybe some other uh, method using the modem okay it will it will receive at the destination okay? this is a language of machine machine know only zeros and ones okay so apart from that we know about that assembler assembler will do the activity of connecting the multiple uh, uh, bit level operation in together okay. compiler everybody know that so it is uh, uh, the concept behind that compiler is it's trying to convert your human readable format into machine readable. it is a no normal execution but the difference between compiler and interpreter is interpreter will do it line by line but compiler will do it in whole program okay some benefits so and allow the programmers to think in more natural language human language okay. for example fortran pascal okay, these are some of the very familiar software which is used during 1980s okay so that is a maximum benefit of uh, uh, the humans where we can complete the task more fastly okay mm -hmm. so that is about the language of machine you know? and when you go deeply so we have this language install where it is installed in operating system oh yes so initially during 1980s uh, microsoft windows was introduced okay so during 1980s windows platform was there so now we are using windows 10 and the latest versions are coming earlier we was having windows 98 something like that 95 96 okay so what it does the windows is a platform which have the keyboard and mouse as an input unit okay and also it have the major two components one is um, system software and another combination is application software okay. so what are they so because the hardware everybody know so a set of uh, um, bolts nuts everything so hardware any hardware components which is uh, uh, we are using to create a computer that is called as hardware okay. bolts and nuts of your computer that is called as hardware okay. but software is what maximum we are working okay but in co we are going to learn deeply about uh, the connection between hardware and software how the connection is made bridge how the bridge is connected because of system software and application software okay hardware is one part your hard disk and your uh, motherboard this is the one section so another section is your program okay. the program suppose you have to go railway station station you need platform okay and you suppose you go uh, any location in airport 
you need a platform to enter into a particular uh, uh, particular part of uh, the vehicle which is you are going to travel so that's why we need the system software is a platform okay so this platform definitely you need anywhere you go we used to call is a platform so bus station railway station and uh, air station everywhere we have platform okay so to, this is totally aimed for the programmers okay operating system assembler and compilers okay and we are the user okay we are not the programmers in future you will become programmer if you study well if you are having good knowledge you will become a java developer or a programmer okay now we are only the users you are using microsoft word i am using ppt i am using google okay but i am not creating the google sheet or uh, i am not creating anything i didn't create nothing so i am not a programmer i am professor i will teach the concepts okay the programmer will create the program and they develop the software the companies like google you know, and uh, ibm so these companies will develop this software and we will use so this is the difference between system software and application system software is operating system i never design any operating system i am using the microsoft windows or maybe linux or maybe unix fine and application software is the thing we am installing android is the platform which is i am using in my phone and i am installing multiple apps whatsapp gmail facebook so all these application i am only installing but i never developed uh, um, this android okay so android is developed by google okay so that is the different between system software and application software and in section set we have to learn these about and deeply into the co in first uh, chapter and second chapter uh, we will study uh, more about this instruction set architecture okay? how these instructions are given to the computer to execute your information we are giving information you are uh, swiping your card in atm machine how the instruction is given to the computer okay? by the format it have some format it have the data storage but where it is located okay it is not in the atm machine your data is located in the bank okay and how it is addressed okay how to access the data by typing your atm password okay and anything goes wrong exceptional condition if the password is wrong you cannot access the system okay or the money is not the the atm service atm machine is out of service so these are the major you know, five instruction set which is for all the device any kind of device you are using your desktop your laptop your uh, uh, computer anything you want to use you must doing this operation without knowing so you are doing this okay you are uh, checking the operations can be performed you are uh, having how the uh, instruction to be specified and you are accessing the data but you don't know where it is located okay, how data access the so these are the five operation every time you are performing whenever you are accessing the system okay and this is a uh, architecture or key consideration of a co okay so whatever we um, discussed today for the previous uh, uh, 20 minutes so what is we discuss is this only okay hardware this is the base okay and software okay now we can understand what is co okay so this is a co this is the co computer organization in section set and architecture okay we have the basement if you are going to construct a new house you have the basement okay and you have all other remaining items uh, inside your home application os compiler firmware okay but the how it is running how you are accessing your floors first floor second floor you need a basement so that is the basement is instruction set and architecture 
so this is called something like underworld okay so we never see what is happening here you never know what is uh, running in your mobile or oh, it is getting heat okay if you will tell only my mobile is getting heat okay why because it's processing the instruction so layout circuit design digital design data path control instruction set processing input output system everything is important okay before purchase any mobile or any computer you first how to check what do you want okay i want snapdragon 865 or 866 with ip68 rating i want dust proof waterproof everything i want the latest uh, model okay i need a uh, one terabyte memory so everything you have to tell then only you can use your whatsapp your twitter your facebook your gmail so, and everything if this hardware is not good you cannot use anything comfortable okay. so the instruction set is going to give the coordination of many levels okay so the google classroom which you are using is uh, something like instruction set architecture okay where it give the coordination between faculty and the student okay. it is a architecture google class is architecture zoom is an architecture okay so where we can work together but it have many levels of abstraction we don't know okay so moore's law is that so what the moore's law 1965 was introduced very simple every 18 to 24 months they will double the power of the processor okay the transistors which is inbuilt in the processor okay for example it was uh, when i start study so i think uh, azure 86 was that then 386 486 586 then pentium 1 2 3 4 what why they are doing to improve the efficiency speed of the processor every 18 to 24 months you will get one processor now i am using i7 so in future i don't know what will come okay already silicon processor is there in mobile we have snapdragon and kiran many processor there but what is the purpose is we have to improve the speed and reduce the size okay so how it is increased starting from 87 to 2003 we got 24 initially we was having a very small speed computer a million instruction per second m 120 and 2000 9000 hp 750 then ibm power came and alpha was there okay and finally we got intel now more maximum we are using intel intel xeon was used during uh, 2000 now we are using i3 i5 i7 fine so and another part is memory so initially we was use 16 kb <laughs> so now we are minimum we are using 32 gb ram or 16 gb ram now this day mobile also have minimum 8 gb ram okay, to improve the speed and performance okay and the abstraction is levels okay so it have multiple levels okay the major two parts is interface and implementation interface is 2 by 1 multiplexer and implemented with gates non gate and gate xor gate whatever it is so the level of abstraction have only two levels interface outside view okay and uh, inside view implementation how it is works okay and these are some of the modern instruction set architecture 86 pentium series okay and spark and hp so how this abstraction so abstraction is uh, is having more than one layer or more levels so machine language program assembly language program and high level so high level is human i am the i am using computer and assembly language is between compiler and machine language okay it will assemble your instruction in particular format okay? and machine language is totally zeros and ones okay 
whatever you are uh, instruction given in human readable form at high level language now it is in machine language okay. so everything control in the control signal specification that is electronic and communication okay. everything is electronics here everything is electronics chips programs stores everything in the chips fine so final architecture so this is a typical organization of computer so this is what we are going to study for next three months. So how processor is working, how control is the, is the what is the data path are used, address bus, control bus, data bus, and memory and register and input unit, output unit, how it is working. Okay. But this is the architecture. Since 1946, all computer have only five main components including your laptop pam tabs your mobile phones anything anything you take smartphone smart tv we have only this input unit output unit memory unit control unit and data bath unit okay so these are very important three categories five main components okay we have three categories input memory processor and five components okay control data path memory input output so don't forget so these are very important you might have learned okay so memory processor we have uh, everything logic uh, multiplexers shifters gates okay. and control is done by switch path memory io device okay. and program okay. program is instruction set of instruction given to the computer that is called as program software okay. that is called control the memory storing your data main memory we have secondary memory and main memory okay. but keyboard mouse is for input and screen sound card printer for output so this is the typical structure of uh, 24 processor this is motherboard we have in motherboard uh, the major component is ram okay. this is ram slack okay. and here we will have the processor and here we will be having the um, input in it, output in it, I.O. interface, I.O. interface and control, okay. All this controller and uh, everything will be done, input, output connection, keyboard connector, mouse connector, everything through this path, okay. And we have the main unit, the control unit here, okay. So it will manage all the instruction set. It is more complicated, but it's, it, 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 it does something good for our human community. Okay. So on PC motherboard, when you go closely, okay, so I already told. So we have processor right over here. And memory. So RAM chip will be inserted here. And we have processor. Here only all the processor will be connected. Pentium 1, 2, 3. Just insert the processor, your computer is ready for use. Here I input output bus and graphics card okay. and all the USB interface. You want to connect keyboard, mouse, printer here, okay, this part, this portion. Okay. So what is does, how it is executed, okay, step by step, okay. very simple and very useful. Okay. So every time it will wait for the next instruction, first initially it will fetch, decode, and execute and result. Okay. So you are going to ATM machine, you are inserting card, it will fetch the instruction from the ATM card, then it will decode, then you can take the money. This is what happening. Okay. So we'll conclude uh, uh, just introduction of today. Okay. What is CO? So what are the major components behind the, behind the CO? And what are the major concepts behind the computer organization? And levels, of abstraction okay and how many processes are there okay so everything we have learned today so the ppt and material is available in the google class okay. so from tomorrow onwards we will start discuss about the uh, different chapters okay. instructions and uh, role of performance and automatic operations logical designs and memory
each and every chapter we will learn so most probably how studying in dld similar concepts uh, so what are the contents we will be covering in uh, rtl register transfer logic so register is all about this uh, computer programming language where it is a bridge between already we discussed and now so it is a bridge between the high level and low level language it is called as architecture how these architecture work with the help of rtl rt bus and memory transfer arithmetic micro operation logic operation shift operation arithmetic logic shift so these are the binary level operation done inside your cpu central processing unit it is so called as digital system or maybe a digital model what is digital system so hardware and software is getting interacted so analog to digital digital to analog so that is called as registers plus operations performed on data stored in them register is nothing about how the faculty is maintaining a register to track student attendance similarly in computer also we have register to track the activities okay where your data is stored how to do subtraction addition multiplication so everything is managed by the registers then so that is called as digital model right so that is a ultimate concept behind why we need digital system now we are in digital era so everything is become digital so earlier it was data you know it is digital in the digital world we must know how these registers and operation perform as data stored in them okay data is in hard disk how to retrieve the data so registers know that so that is called as register register model so and another concept we must know that is called as micro operations so micro ones or the concept behind the micro operation is the data stored in one or more register that is called as micro operation okay i want to check your uh, attendance i can log in neva i can check your attendance i check your uh, uh, marks i can check your uh, bio data everything in a single model in a single digital data forum so that is called as micro operation the data performed or data stored in one or more registers okay uh, the result of the operation may be is something like replace the previous binary information or transfer either you open your computer or open your mobile phone you will try to download something or you may delete something or you will replace something this only we will do read the data write the data delete the data that's it so that is called as micro operation in cpu language in computer organization so in the example you can see shift right operation we are moving one shift towards right that is right shift and one shift towards left that is called as left shift you can see this one is removed and now zero become that like that it will be moving one by one so these are the simple operation to replace the data and coming to the next concept deep concept that is called as digital computer we know what is digital operation and we know what is digital model and we know what is micro operation and why we are say actually we used to say computer or desktop actually it is a digital computer or digital mobile or digital tv okay actually it is called as like that one because of micro operation zeros and ones okay the computer know only zeros and ones now we are combining register micro operation and we are adding control now we are giving control to the computer so that is called as digital computer you remove the computer control then it is called as digital operation or digital model for, for example in atm machine just you are inserting atm card 
so where you can able to take the money if control is there if it will verify the password if the password is wrong it will not allow you if the password is right you can access the atm machine so this is a very simple example now we are giving control to the machine okay so that is called as digital computer so coming to the next rtl major concept is uh, everything is symbolic notation it is not like a human conversation it is a low level level language okay. that is called as machine language everything it know only symbols zeros ones move a comma b add a comma c okay. move r1 to r2 so these are symbolic notations that is called as micro operation okay. so how the micro operation is performed we will see our first micro operation so computer registers are designated by capital letters sometimes followed by numerals to denote the function of the register so all the register micro operation is done by letters everything is capital so r1 is register 1 and mar means computer will understand that is memory address register and caps pc program counter and ir instruction register and sr is a status register right so this is a way how this micro operation is performed in the microprocessor lab maybe this thing you will see it in a microprocessor lab how to create the micro operations program this is called as assembly language program assembler Okay. assembler will take care of these operations everything should be in caps okay a simple block diagram of a register register 1 assume that this is a register 1 is uh, um, we have our class computer co a section or b section something okay, which have 60 bits here we have 8 bits okay, showing individual bits uh, all the registers will be start from minimum 8 bit register or 16 bit or 32 bit so these days we are using 64 bits registers there are hundreds and thousands of registers are there in a computer it is present in the cpu central processing unit in your processor so it is used for controlling the operation nothing else okay it's going to control your digital computer okay that means zero is off one is on okay so, so this is block diagram how register is represented the register can be re represented by bits okay four nipple equal to one bit okay so like that we have 1027 bits equal to 1 mb and 1027 um mb equal to 1 gb so like that we have terabyte gigabyte gigabyte okay. but everything starts level in the level of bits okay four nipples equal to one bit so that is binary value okay so you must be aware of this one this bits play the major role it may be 8 bit 16 bit or maybe a 32 bit or maybe a 64 bit or 128 okay so it may be called the capacity of your register so other ways of drawing the block diagram so we can draw the program counter 16 bit register okay. 0 to 15 that is 16 bit 0 to 31 is 32 bit register 0 to 63 is 64 bit register okay program count so we have another partition in every register we have lower byte and upper byte 0 to 7 is called as lower byte okay and uh, a to 15 is called as upper byte hatch l we can partition any register like that lower byte and upper byte right so another typical example for micro level operation 
that is computer machine language assembly language you can see the symbol caps r1 2 r2 so this symbol denotes transfer the contents of r1 into r2 okay we say it is a st statement m o v move r1 to r2 right so we are the source is r1 the destination is r2 so earlier the attendance i have marked those who are absentees okay so i will mark with some random number 78 64 78 in the computer memory just i click the option okay, in micro level operation what i am doing is i am enabling and disabling zero or one the r1 value is zero that means absent the r1 value is one that is present just i am assigning into the particular class r2 is your class a section or b section something once i submit the data it will be stored in the memory so that is that's why it is called a source and i'm moving all the students data into the particular section register a section or b section so this way we are assuming how circuits will be designed simply i am talking in assembly language but how it is being transferring your data so with control or without control here we have without any control now we have control that is called as conditional transfer so simply i am telling r1 to r2 there is no control it will move but if the student are absent the message will be sent to the parent mobile number here i am storing only absent is data but i am telling to computer on condition so those who are absent that numbers should be identified and send messages to the parent mobile number your son is absent today okay, that is called as conditional now we are introducing p colon okay, r1 to r2 okay if p equal to 0 if the r1 is present okay or absent so p equal to 0 or 1 okay, we have to tell the computer to send message if p equal to 0 it will send the message absent p equal to 1 yes it is present no need to send the message so this is the way computer will understand how you are transferring the information r1 to r2 with condition okay so this is a hardware implementation simply i am going to neva just i am submitting absent these and percent into the data suddenly it send message to the parents how it is done so this is the concept behind this is the organization computer organization model so there will be a control unit definitely in your cpu and it will load the data moved from r1 to r2 if r1 is one it will store the data present if r1 is moved to r2 section a or b then it will tell these are the absentees send the message to all these absentees parents mobile number based upon the clock generated analog so this is timing diagram okay each and every operation you are uh, doing in mobile or computer we generate the clock pulse that's why we used to check the speed of the ram so one gigahertz one terabyte or something like that we used to tell the memory terabyte or we used to tell the speed of the computer megahertz gigahertz terahertz hertz hertz is your time how much time it will take to transfer the data normally the pulse will be continuously running once you switch on your mobile or a, a digital computer okay. the clock load will occurs here t plus one now we get the signal yes we have to pass the information to the mobile 
suddenly it will transfer the information to the mobile with the help of antennas that is repeat station okay, with the mobile uh, subscribers number a particular subscriber number is reached okay with the help of some um, people those who are involved maybe airtel or jio okay. so these people are having number of subscribers okay. so they are having control to transfer the signal to the particular mobile number that is called as synchronized with clock clock speed okay. your speed of computer is called as uh, calculated by the clock pulses and clocks hertz we used to say it is a hertz right so this is a way how the computer operation is done the computer organization is moving the data of r1 r2 with condition okay either zero or one right so some of the symbols you can see here letters these are uh, micro level operations it's computer uh, understanding that is machine readable formats letters numerals denotes a register m a r comma r2 r1 mu a comma b m u l multiply b comma c so everything these are uh, uh, letters and numerals used for micro operation and parenthesis which is used for denotes the part of the register which part you want to mention r1 lower part or higher part okay. so you can mention l or h directly you can use parenthesis for writing the code to control your cpu and the arrow which is used for transfer the information and comma to separate the registers or micro operation so these are the basic symbols you can remember letters parenthesis arrows and commas easy okay uh, most probably these are uh, very easy to remember uh, okay so apart from that how it is carry the information that is called as common bus system address bus data bus control bus we have three bus what is the use of bus is is a common line something something like uh, if you want to go from tripadi to chennai you need a bus or maybe airways what is the purpose is to transfer each bit each and every single bit or a binary information one at a time from one register to another register okay how it is done so this is a typical block diagram of a computer organization you can see so register a b c d simultaneously section a b c d okay so i have updated the a section attendance b section attendance c section attendance d section attendance how it is transferred to the main memory with the help of multiplexer or maybe a decoder this is what you have studied in dld okay so now here each register have four bits okay four bits you can uh, for example in d section two students are absent so that means p colon so d2 r1 which is transferring the absentees so those values are zero to the multiplexer and to the message station so this is the bus carrying your information carrying the data carrying the bits carrying the binary operation register a which have four bits b bits uh, b have four bits and c have four bits and d also have four bits and what is the use of this multiplexer combining all into a four line common bus okay, mux 1 2 3 0 okay, 1 2 3 four multiplexers we have with conditions s1 s0 which one to be, which one to be allowed first which one to be allowed next okay, simultaneous so this is called as our co so this is what we are going to study for next three months this is all about our course how to design this multiplexer design the decoder 
how computer is understanding to transfer the register values to the main memory okay, to process your data okay only thing we are playing with the data with in bit level or binary operation right so see we can see another uh, simple example how to write and read the data that is called as bus and memory transfer bus is to carry the bits and memory is going to write the bit or read the bit read the data from the memory or write the data into the memory okay so now we are writing a particular uh, register c to bus bus some common bus lines are available now we are loading the r2 value into the bus saying that uh, the particular section register 2 which is belongs to b section the absent is listed is loaded and transferred with the help of clock pulses okay, because the clock is designed how much time to execute your data how it is executing the next question is buffer now buffer is coming into the picture so buffer everybody know while you switch on your tv also or you're switching on your mobile or a computer you will get a buffer so buffer is used to maintain the ramp between the source and destination it is temporary memory to load maybe you can see your mobile phone the samsung logo will come or in tv you may see some loading symbol in computer also you may see some loading symbol that is called buffering or very simple example uh, go to youtube and play the video it will be saying buffering you can see the red line in the uh, play area Just, uh, well once you click play button you can see that buffering so that is temporary memory which is loading your data we have three state buffer digital circuit okay? that is uh, called as logic zero one so this will decide what is your normal input and output okay? for example in your pipelining processor if you give a it will come output b but here control c we have the input either it is zero or one whether it is absent is or present maybe it is very good example is your uh, switch in your home you can switch your fan or light either it is zero or it's one okay and you can uh, have some speed control in your fan so which is start from zero to five zero is normal speed and five is the maximum speed so that is called as control input <clears throat> in a you are switching on the fan the fan will start rotate is output b but fan speed is controlled with the help of input either zero or one or two or three or maximum speed is five okay you can control your data okay? so that is called as three state buffer very simple example for a computer organization see now it is buffering when c equal to 1 the switch is on there is a communication between a and b the source to destination now fan is rotating okay when the control becomes zero so but power is there open circuit but fan is stopped because it doesn't know the speed one or two or three or four so that's why a is also on b is also on but still it is open circuit is waiting for the input because the input is zero the span speed is zero okay so that's why the next level we can go that is called as in the place of multiplexer okay we can replace decoder now we have control of your fan with remote control okay you no need to go to the switch another example okay so select Okay, we have select we can select either manual or automatic okay 
the two plus four decoders are used to control your bus line to transfer the data from source to destination. Okay. So all these three state bus buffers are connected to the decoder okay, where it have input, output as well control. Okay. So zero, it means normal speed. One is high speed. Three is little bit more high speed. Four is another level speed, top speed. Okay, because everything has some program logic okay? with conditioning of decoder. Okay, so the enable is going to give permission to access your data based upon which line, which three state buffer you are going to use from these four bits. Okay, A, B, C, D. So this is another another very good example. How you are going to select the option and how you are going to execute the option. Uh, and memory transfer is the another uh, important thing which is being used in the bus transfer that is read and writing the memory. It's so very simple example. We can see read the data from address register to data register. And write the data from memory address register to data register. You can see this diagram. So easily you can understand we have address register values, each and every files, your videos, whatever you are storing into your computer have some values, right? So those values we cannot see. That is low level language. You can see only your picture. You can see only your video. You can see only your word doc. How it is replacing? Okay, you want to delete some video file or you want to replace the old file to the new file. How it is doing? So address register value is x12 and R1 value is 100. Okay. So now I am telling to the computer the value of address register will be replaced in R1. Earlier R1 value is 100. Now once this instruction is executed, now value of R1 is 66. See this? Okay. Now the X12 value is 66. Earlier it was 100. <clears throat> but micro operation which I said to the computer is to replace the value of R1. So this is the way the RAM, you can see random access memory. So these are memory values, okay, buffer values. Okay. So automatic operation we will discuss tomorrow. Okay. So this is all about uh, the basic concepts of uh, bus and memory transfer and uh, some of the registers concepts and register symbols and how it is transferring with the help of multiplexer and decoder so these are called as micro operations please remember so this is the ultimate concept behind how CO is working. This is called as computer organization. See, the CO is the way which it will organize the registers and multiplexer or decoder or gates you are using, so whatever it may be. Okay. And we have learned something about decoder and multiplexer and three state bus buffer also. So we are getting into the next topic what we discussed and watched in the video automatic micro operations okay. so what is this automatic micro operation okay. so it is completely a computer based language okay. so which is widely used for computer do all the automatics in binary form so everybody know how to calculate this binary form 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 this is a sequence where uh, the zeros ones are used for uh, calculating the particular information you want to do addition or either subtraction or multiplication okay. so in mathematic operation we have the major classification register transfer micro operation all these micro operation is assembly language 
so low level long reach okay an automatic micro operation okay? logic operation and shift operations so these are the major four categories please remember so we can uh, learn something new which is apart from uh, dld what you have studied the basic arithmetic micro operations we used to do add subtraction increment decrement so adding two registers and storing the registered value into the destination register r3 or subtracting subtracting uh, what we can do normally minus symbol or we can use ones complement by adding uh, the value of register plus 1 hopefully you know so this is another method of doing subtraction you can take ones complement twos complement or you can directly go to the subtraction and loading into the destination register so all are very simple concept nothing uh, we are not learning any rocket science only thing you have to study okay you have to study all the materials are available in our google class so please read it if you read you can score 100 out of 100 in uh, co subject it is very easy subject and you can in this course you can learn complete idea and operations of a computer so low level language so when you do these ones complement twos complement okay. so this is a typical symbolic representation how the computer will understand by transferring put on bar on above of the r2 register this one's complement when you have to uh, r plus 1 and uh, do the subtraction operation you need to complement and increment so increase the value of register by 1 so suppose the value of register is 3 if you increase the value it will become 4 similarly the value of register is 3 when you decrease the value it will become 2 okay. that is r2 will be transferred with the value of r2 minus 1 okay, the register value is decreased one and register value is increased one increment decrement one's complement two's complement okay. of course the another idea behind the cvo we are doing that uh, circuits of order and full order circuits it's a 4 bit and 8 bit combination okay, where you can able to understand how the computer is processing okay? uh, uh, how we can select inputs x y and output clock and select okay? so this thing will work based upon the input zeros and ones okay so zero plus zero you will get the clock signal zero and s is zero the value for only input x one and y one then the clock will be 1 and the output of s will be a 0 okay. so this is what how it is working in your household devices also when you switch on the device it will be 1 and the clock pulse will be generated automatically if you switch off any device it will be 0 and clock pulses will be stopped okay. so that's why this half order and full order circuit give a clarity about it. how we can <coughs> do exactly the operation with the help of and gate and or gate and xor gates or maybe a nor gate okay? a complete full order circuit will give the complete solution for transferring your content from source to destination this is for your information how the system is processing the binary values right so this is exactly we need for designing arithmetic micro operation binary adder binary addition can be done with the basic input of a and b and clock pulses and select okay, which one to process the data it is a complete full order circuit which is widely used for binary addition fine and apart from that uh, when you want to do arithmetic micro operation in a, uh, computer low level architecture computer 
machine readable format so we need the support of xor gate or maybe you can use or gate or and gate so one is for doing addition and another four will be supporting for subtraction we can now we can now do addition and subtraction in a single binary order and subtractor these these are micro level operations we cannot directly see in your naked eyes it is a complete a programmed chip your microprocessor have this logic to execute your data or information so apart from that uh, um, there will be always okay, input definitely we need input assume that the input a is 5 and b is 3 T minus five. We are doing subtraction by using the adder and subtractor. So the answer will be minus two. So that will be in binary forms. Okay, one 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 zero. Okay. So this may be a create the overflow. Okay. So that's why these gates are used to identify if the output is one, if overflow, and if the if the output is zero, if there is no overflow. maybe you can sometime in your uh, creating a c program or c++ program you can see the output uh, so it's a overflow some x value is overflow so that means so the computer could not recognize the combination of binary inputs you are giving either it's addition or subtraction that time that time the gates play the major role so then what is the solution for that and we must know the signed or unsigned numbers that can be represented in four bits or the range of signed can numbers can be represented in four bits or repeat for n bits n number of bits you want to add so these are some of the solutions where you can always use signed bits okay, which is which is used to recognize by the computer so that is all about the how we can create a um, adder and subtractor the arithmetic micro operation adder and subtractor now we will use half order for creating increment if you want to increase the register value or to or to plus 1 so then you might have know the logic okay. this is a logic behind the concept behind how the binary increment will work okay. all the half orders are connected together to increase the value of the register by selecting the clock pulses maybe the input may be sometime uh, the one which is the value are going giving to increase the register value okay. and it is connected with the next input y okay. so to increase the value simultaneously then finally we will get the output that is register value r2 will be increased one by one and moving to the destination register so you can use counter also so if you don't use half order there is a counter is there you can use counter okay, by incrementer can be implemented using counter and the binary decrementer can be implemented by adding simply the four ones binary values to desire register each time these are another two methods you can use either you can go for counter to increase the value or you can use the four digit for each register okay, each time okay. so then we will go deeply into the next concept that is uh, how the output of binary adder is calculated from the following arithmetic sum D equal to a plus y plus c in. Okay. So these are the uh, performed at circuit level. So we we do manually. We need calculator for addition, subtraction, multiplication. But how the circuit will understand? Okay. So that's why we need a uh, parallel adder. Okay. Uh, that is called as multiplexer. Okay. Now multiplexer will take care of uh, a complete. in and out operation okay for do this d equal to a plus y plus c okay. so this is somewhat typical operation where 
a computer could recognize, a circuit could recognize. So which is input and what is the output? So obviously, it will be connected to the full order with the help of a multiplexer. The multiplexer plays the major role here okay, to convert the input C in. Okay, the input is maybe uh, A plus X plus and C in. So, and it will be processed with the help of MUX, okay, that the multiplexer to uh, parallelly calculate the information. It will increase the efficiency of a circuit. Okay, and you will get the 4-bit arithmetic circuit. Okay. So this 4-bit arithmetic circuit widely used in very oldest computer. Uh, now everything becomes 64-bit. Okay. Uh, for example, 80. Uh, 286 that was the processor used this logic so it was 4 bit then 8 then it was 16 bit computer okay. then uh, now now we are using 64 bit computer so all these circuits are designed to execute now 64 bit earlier it is like it was like this okay only 4 bit a logical operation apart from uh, the four categories which we are discussing today the logical micro operations everybody know that or so that is a gate you can see in the figure okay, this gate is widely used for performing the addition plus symbol is used and you can use either that less than symbol for executing for example you can see in the screen how the binary values are added with the help of or gate okay so this another micro level operation and the gate okay so and the gate we know the symbol and how to this do the multiplication or any operation so these four basic operation are and not so these are widely used for um, this complement operation okay. any complement uh, once complement or two complements you are going to do that time you have to use this gate in the circuit. Okay. This example for how to do this uh, complement operation, either maybe uh, ones or twos complement, okay. and XOR. So R and not XOR. Exclusively addition. Exclusively add additions. Okay. So this this is going to add two different binary values uh, in the circuit level okay and uh, apart from that one more uh, important operation is the selective set operation okay. is widely used to select the bits of register into logic by using or operation you can use or operations to select the two different bits one is in the process register and apart from that, another part is loaded into the register from memory to perform selective set operation <coughs> for addition. So this is a typical example for a, a toggling operation. So what is toggling? Okay. So loading your data into the register from memory to perform selective complement operation. When you want to do one's complement and two's complement, then definitely you have to move the binary values from register to memory. Okay. When you when you when you move the values from register to memory, then it is called as toggling. Okay. So all this is for your understanding. Okay. We are uh, just uh, you have to read it, you have to mug up it, and you have to write it in the exam. Okay. Because uh, these are completely uh, uh, technical content. Okay. But you should understand okay, what is happening behind. Okay. So other important logic is insert operation everybody know you can insert the binary values in between the register to register or maybe a memory okay so there are two steps to insert operation please remember you have to first identify mask okay or or them with desired value so you have to put mask for that <laughs> value then you have to do the or operation so this is two insert the value this example is here okay. so you can replace the leftmost four bits okay, either 0 1 1 0 with 1 0 0 1 okay. then you will get the desired output okay. 
this is called as inset operation so two steps you must remember mask and or them with desired value okay and now and of micro operation okay. apart from or and not and x car we have another logic operation for the circuit level so we are we are using computer and mobile phone in using high level language so the all these all we are learning only for circuit level okay circuit will execute each and every operation by using gates and or please remember and or not the uh, xor okay all these nand gates are performing addition subtraction multiplication one's complement two's complement everything we, we don't know we don't know we can't see directly what is happening in the computer but this is uh, this is happening okay and nor we have nor the similar kind of operation this is a exact representation of nor and example for executing the two's complement operation or maybe a one's complement operation so and sub tough other logic operation we have uh, preset and reset so reset everybody know so any time your mobile or laptop get hang we will press the restart operation which will clear all the memory and register and take it take back to the zero okay and preset is the value which is being assigned for each and every register that is called as four sol bits into one if it is zero all the bits will be forced to become one something like that we are uh, something like we are using um, to forcefully switch off or switch on particular device or forcefully you want to execute some information then everything should be one then only the operation will be done okay so these are the preset preset means we are forcing the computer do some activity and clear is we are erasing the memory and making to it to zero so one is preset is one and reset is zero very simple okay so please understand so any doubts we will uh, discuss at the end uh, okay of the class and finally we have uh, the hardware implementation how it this and or x or and not uh, will be derived uh, okay. this is a hardware implementation of uh, how this data information executed okay. so by using the you can see the gates here okay. not or and x or all are connected together but have different operations by using the multiplexer four cross one uh, each carries one bit and four bit operation for four into one multiplexer which is used to execute okay. different operation xr or and and complement okay so this is input select you can select either 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay so apart from that another important concept behind this rtl is shift micro operation used to shift there are three types of shifts is the logical circular and arithmetic okay. and we have to use flip flops here okay here in shift operation flip flops are coming into the picture okay. so this is serial input one by one shift right and shift left okay. move one value to the right hand side and move one value to the left hand side okay the input will determine the what kind of type maybe it is logical or a circular or arithmetic shift okay you have to tell to the computer this is logical this is circular or maybe arithmetic So one is logical left and another thing is logical right or maybe something like that so this is a rtl long ways okay r1 so shift right and shift left this is the representation and this is the execution part so circular shift is very simple so here we the operation will end once the data is moved but here it is not like that the register which is at the end will be moved to the first the main we can mention by using cir right and cil left 
this is for uh, circular right shift and left shift okay done <laughs> and apart from that other important concept is arithmetic shift right and arithmetic shift left we are doing it in binary level earlier we used only register now we can go for binary level operation okay? but we need signed bit here either it is multiplication or subtraction or whatever it may be so the the arithmetic shift of similar like um, shift right and shift right left and overflow can be monitored with the help of flip flops okay so one is overflow similarly and zero is there is no overflow okay. and you can uh, see this example very easy example you can understand very easily actually the register value is w1 w0 110 okay if we do shift right once the value of one is moved to the right hand side and uh, to the uh, twice the value has moved uh, one two times to the left once okay, you can see the red color numbers okay, and twice two zeros okay the change you can identify easily okay, where the changes are happening okay so this is the concept of behind how arithmetic shift and right is left is working the logical shift left and right you can see Okay, how it is working okay. and circular shift the end value will be moved to the first one so rotating information similarly how we will um, uh, implement this in hardware part again we need much multiplexer previously we saw 4 into 1 multiplexer for AND gate, NOT gate, OR gate everything Similarly, for shift operations also, this is a circuit level architecture for executing the shift micro operation. So you can't see it in the computer where it is, but this is for your understanding. Okay. So select will select the values and zero here. The important thing is zero for shift right and one for shift left. This is the way it will understand, computer will understand. So everything is controlled at, in, now you can remember where it is, arithmetic logic unit. In computer CPU, we have one unit that is called as ALU. In ALU, we have this, everything. So apart from that memory unit and control unit, so ALU does everything. Okay, It will manage registers, gates, all these circuits are connected. One operation unit is called as arithmetic logic unit. This is a ALU, okay? In a computer, assume that it is a 80386 computer, CPU. We have the one stage arithmetic logic unit here, which have the select operation for four bits, 0011 or 000 or 0001, okay? Or all ones, okay? So which is going to execute your input by using uh, multiplexer, and you will get the output shift right and shift left. Okay. This will tell the computer whether it is shift right or a circular shift or a, a normal logical shift or maybe arithmetic shift. Okay. So this is a total complete architecture of arithmetic logic shift unit. Okay. So this is all about uh, uh, how a computer is functioning really, okay. practically, how it is functioning with the help of um, register transfer logic and uh, micro operations <clears throat> so these are very easy so please remember the gates the off order full order circuits nothing will change only thing you have to understand the concept so the concept behind and or gate okay, and multiplexer full order off order okay. because a lot of um, co have lot of diagrams you have to remember all these diagrams if you if you are you have to practice if you are good in these circuit diagrams definitely you can score centum in this subject okay because we are not studying any rocket science only we are learning the concept behind the 
the existing concept behind the computer so please please remember the concept please read it before come to the class everything is dead easy you only need practice please start practice the diagram every day okay, because all the five units have huge number of diagrams see this diagram you have to draw definitely you have to draw and practice okay fine we will stop today class and uh, uh, we will uh, have the another discussion in the next class so please uh, any doubts please feel free to ask me okay if you, don't, if you feel shy we can post it in our uh, technology which is uh, going to operate without uh, human intervention so that's why the tesla model is more uh, familiar with other models and at the end you can watch uh, there is no more key for your car okay? just a smart card so which you can show at the uh, door side okay where you will be allowed in to enter into the car and you can uh, start drive by telling the source and destination okay. the computer will understand so where to take you how to take you okay. so it is completely the idea behind the computer organization and architecture okay. so today we will discuss the next topic uh, in our course okay. computer arithmetic is so completely going to operate your uh, smartphone your smart car you are smart uh, fridge okay, smart tv so everything is running behind the help of uh, cpu okay, cpu okay. the cpu have alu control unit and memory unit just we are going to feed the input and we are going to get the output so we have the uh, major knowledge about computer arithmetic addition subtraction multiplication division so this is what the basic operation will be done in uh, alu arithmetic logic unit today just we are going to focus and you can learn some major idea behind how the alu is working with the help of uh, numbers zeros and ones so binary decimal hexadecimal octal so these are the values which is being used by the cpu the cpu know only zeros and ones okay. and does the calculation and everything else computer is there to service this unit and handles the integer and may handle the floating point numbers real numbers also and maybe separate floating point unit is available for math coprocessor so every processor have the coprocessor that processor is called as arithmetic logic unit maybe on chip separate FPU floating point of unit. For example, in 80486 processor, which have the 80486DX plus. So this is called O processor. This is called as O processor. So this O processor will help us to work continuous support for the automatic operation. AL unit have control unit, register, flags and registers. So the input will be control unit and, and registers and it will be processed with the help of flags. The flags will be raised, whether it is addition or subtraction or a division, so the flags will take care. The register to store the information and move the data from one sec section to another section. There is a use of registers, which we discussed in the previous class. Just we will discuss the basic concepts today, how it is working. Please, you can practice in home, how, most probably you studied in DLD, same way. So how this AND gate table is working, zero into zero, or one into zero, 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 or one, one. So finally, we'll get the result zero, zero, one. Okay. Hopefully, you remember. Similarly, so all the four bit, we have one, two, four, eight. If it is eight bit, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Okay. Simultaneously, it will run. For example, for a uh, integer representation, okay. if it is 41, or if, it, if you type high or by, okay, whatever it's maybe, the computer will convert into 
zeros and ones okay to process your data so in uh, for letters we used to say it is ascii american standard code for information and interchange similarly binary numbers also so here we can uh, see that uh, zero is off and one is on so that means for 41 we need uh, 32 plus 8 plus 1 Zero zero one zero one double zero one. So thirty two eight plus one forty one. Finally, we got forty one. So this is a very simple example, very easy for your understanding. Just we'll discuss only the concept behind how it is being worked with the computer. Only thing we have to focus on whether it is signed or unsigned, or it's once complement or a <laughs> complement for addition subtraction. <laughs> Okay. So everything will be processed so based upon the oh no. concept how we are going to use it for multiple purpose okay. to work with your calculator or your whatever it's maybe so your machines or maybe a computer program C C plus plus program or a any kind of program which is being used by the integer representation and basic concept you must remember very simple very easy if it is zero that is positive and one is negative so plus 18 the so first lsb okay left side bit or least bit okay so that is will be the end left side the first bit to notify the to tell the computer this is positive or negative one means negative number minus 18 okay and uh, plus 18 means zero double zero one double zero one zero so that is 18 okay so that is very simple example for you how how to calculate you know one two four eight okay and 16 okay so 16 plus 2 18 we have one is equals to 16 and another one we are having that's value is 2 okay 16 plus 2 is 18 the only thing the symbol first symbol denotes zero is positive one is negative so what the problem in a sign magnitude in a sign magnitude we have to consider both sign and magnitude in arithmetic two representation of zero either it may be plus zero or maybe a minus zero. Similarly, we have two complement for everything. So for a, a positive, already we discussed. Okay. All that means zero. A negative two complement that means one. For all the values, we can use like this. Okay. So plus three, uh, one plus two, three. Okay. Plus two, just enable one. All remains zero. Okay. Similarly, minus one. All remains one, okay, minus two, except the actual value because only we have to worry about left side bits. Okay. The first one becomes zero and remaining all one. If it is minus three, similarly, okay, it will work okay, behind the values one plus two, three, minus three. Okay. So this is the way how a two's complement can be identified in a computer operation. This is for your basic knowledge. Please go and find more about this. What is the benefit of uh, this arithmetic operation in a computer? So one representation of zero arithmetic works easily. Okay, we'll see one by one. And neg neg negation, that is negating is fairly easy, very easy. Okay. And the Boolean complements gives whatever you can add to left side bit. Okay. So everything becomes Boolean. Boolean is nothing, zeros and ones. When you convert the value 3 into Boolean number, okay, it may be in reverse order or uh, actual order. Okay. So the Boolean value of 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1. Okay. So that is called as uh, complement. Okay. So 1's complement and 2's complement. Maybe. Okay. So these are the benefits of using the arithmetic operation in a computer. It will help us to process your data more fast. That's why we are telling computer is fast. Actually, humans are fast. So this is a very simple diagrammatic representation for 
geometric depiction of two complement integers. So take these values, uh, four bit numbers and n bit numbers. Okay. N number of zeros and ones used for subtraction and, and addition here. The value between the four bit, take four bits, it's zero, zero, it's double zero, double zero. Either it's a positive or maybe negative. Okay. So positive we can see, zero, zero, one and totally reverse when you go for negative. Okay. Just a complement software value. And n number, so we can go for 8 bit, 16 bit, 32, 64 and 128. Currently, our computers are used for 64 bit mostly. In future, uh, we may have a computer with a 128 processor of controlling your digits more faster. A negation, special case one, that is called as bitwise not. Okay, zero become one, one becomes zero. The result will be always zero if you add one with the zero, zero, and one, one. Zero and bit by small. So that's why we are adding one to the least significant bit LSB. B. Okay. Overflow is always ignored. Okay. So that's why minus zero equal to zero. A negation special case. So that may be similar concept. Only thing we have to monitor most significant bit. That we monitor only LSB. Here we monitor MSB. So it should change during the negation. And range of numbers, either already I told, it's 8 bit, 16 bit, or maybe a 32 or 64 or 128. So currently we are having the conversation only 8 bit and 16 bit. Okay. How it is working to power 15 or to power 7. So 0 to 7, 0 to 16. So starts from 1, 2, 4, 8, continuously, 16, 32, uh, 68, and 128. Okay. Simultaneously for all the numbers, it's lakhs or million or trillions. Everything is going to work with this 18 bit or 2 complement. It is 2 power 7 and it becomes 2 power 15. Conversion between lengths. You can convert the length from 8 bit to 16 bit and 16 bit to 32 bit. Okay, we should focus on here also. We should focus only on that is a sign minus either it is plus or maybe minus. Plus is 0, minus is 1. Okay. And addition subtraction uh, almost you studied in DLD. Okay how a minus b equal to a plus minus b okay, we will be going to do two complement of substance and, and and to the menu end okay so we have only new addition and complement circuits so when you go apply this into circuits we need a and gate or gate not gate or xr gate how it will be converted into the Hardware for a normal addition and subtraction. Subtraction. We need register. Okay, when you go for automatic logic unit, already you studied. Okay, you have register. Okay, if you want uh, one more time, you'll see the architecture. So control unit register flags register. So flags are to used for control the overflow. Okay. So coming to the back to our. Uh, Hardware for addition subtraction to in your arithmetic logic unit. Okay. How the hardware is working? You can see simply okay, register two registers will be there. So we are going to do a minus b equal to a plus minus b. Okay. A complementer is used for managing boolean and uh, a software will be there for a. Uh, controlling and connecting your data into adder okay. and overflow which will be taken care if your sign is not understand okay. and adder will add the value and send it to 
register. So it is a continuous process. Register B have the value. Register A have the value. So both will be added with the help of overflow. And a switch. Select addition or subtraction. Okay. So addition 0 or select uh, subtraction is 1. So this switch will take care, take care of whether you are going to do addition or subtraction. So this is a simple hardware implementation of your addition, binary addition and subtraction. And coming to the multiplication is more complex. Okay, only thing uh, you must focus on the partial product for each digit. Okay, and take care with place value that is column. Then add the partial product. It is more complex. It's not easy as much addition it is more complex we need a multiplicand and multiplier and partial products okay. and note if multiplier bit is one then copy okay. copy means move to the next level okay. and place the value what is the output you are having one 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 is one one zero is uh, here we are using indicate one zero zero one and one one become one and with the help of the boolean value, we are getting the remainders and moving to the next level. And product, the final value of 11 and 13 is 143 in decimal. Okay. So 11 into 30. Okay. So that is the thing you have to note it down. So every time you have to double the length of the result. Okay. So this is a very good example for you. Understanding of multiplication in a binary form you must focus on the partial products okay so this is a block diagram what we discussed for addition it is totally uh, different but it is easy okay the major thing is we need to work with the complement and multiplicand okay and multiplayer we need shift and logic control unit, which is used for add the multiplicand with n beta adder. It is continuous process. And shift register, which is going to shift the values from right to left or maybe left to right, based upon the information you are having. So all this shift will be a continuous process until we reach the product. So this is a very good example for a block diagram or architecture for a, a hardware architecture for a unsigned binary multiplication. Signed it is more complex, but it is easy only. But uh, the circuit designing is complex. As a computer engineers, uh, we need to focus on programming only. Okay, but this is for your understanding. Please go through it and uh, you, you start practice and learn it. Okay, how it is uh, being worked. To, uh, to manage your data by binary form. Okay. You can see it is uh, M is for uh, multiplicand and Q is for uh, multiplayer okay. and A which is uh, adder okay. and C which is managing the complement. So until it reaches the product of one, it will be continued. So that's why we need first cycle, second cycle, until it reach the uh, complement become one in the fourth cycle or maybe fifth or sixth cycle okay, you move the value uh, from msb to lsb one by one uh, so based upon the multiplayer and multiplicand m and q so the shift will be done one by one so finally it will reach you can see the adder will be reach zero 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 one so then you stop the process, you will get the product, 143. So this is a flow chart of what we discussed. Start, okay, multiply and multiplier, and count up to n, start from 11 into 13, okay, until q equal to one, okay, that is adder, adder 
is equal to 1. Yes, it will be processing your uh, complement and adder and multiplicate. Okay. Once it is reached count equal to 0, yes, and you will get the product. Okay. The count finally it is 0. Okay. End the product. Or else, no, again, Q equal to 1 and add the data and again shift the data to the counter. It is a continuous loop if Q equal to 0 and count equal to 0. If Q not equal to 1, then it directly comes to the shift on count reach 0, then you will get the product. This is a very simple flowchart for uh, doing <laughs> unsigned binary multiplication. So whatever we are discussing, you have to definitely mug up. So this may be a screen exam flowcharts for uh, binary multiplication, division, and addition. So everything you have to mug up. Just we are discussing only the concepts. Please you have to remember. So what we discuss is unsigned numbers. Now we are going into the signed numbers, negative. Okay. We have two methods. You can use both algorithm. That is easy. There is important question also, please. These, uh, whatever we are discussing uh, today is, uh, you have to mug up. Everything you have to mug up. So you can use Booth's algorithm or you can do it manually. Convert to positive if you record and multiply as a four. If signs were different, negate the answer. So this is solution one. So better you can go for Booth's algorithm. Boots algorithm is very simple. Okay. Similarly, start and get the values of multiplicand and multiplier. And so we have Q0, Q minus 1. Either you can change it to positive. If it is 0, 1, you can go to that um, adder plus multiplicand and do the arithmetic shift right and count minus one then count equal to zero and the product are continuous okay. so in normal unsigned binary integers we have this part only we don't have a minus m okay. you can see only we have a plus m okay. but here we have negative because we need to do negative numbers either you can do addition or you can do subtraction and another condition we have 1100. Zero, zero. If it is the value of Q0 and Q1 is equal to 11 one and 00, zero then do the arithmetic shift and complete the operation. Very simple flowchart. This is called Booth's algorithm. The main focus is negative. Okay. That is your adder value. Okay. Adder value is your A minus M. Okay, adder minus multiplicand. So this is another uh, example for Boots algorithm. Initially, you can see start with negative okay, okay, until the value reaches okay, 0, 0, 001. Okay, that is your adder. Adder starts from 0, 0, 0 and end with 0, 0, 0, 1. We have to perform first cycle, second cycle and third cycle. Shifting and finally fourth cycle, you will get the final product. This is the very simplest way of uh, doing multiplication for arithmetic. Multiplication for arithmetic operation in a computer. Okay. How computer will understand your ALU understand in this way only. And another concept is we saw uh, binary addition and multiplication next to level is division it is more complex than multiplication so multiplication is more complex than addition and division is more complex than multiplication uh, for multiplication we have uh, uh, for multiplication we have boots algorithm no need to worry we follow the steps okay and for division negative numbers are really bad based on long division when you do manually, it is very easy. 
but when you go for design a yeah, hardware it is difficult okay so we need a divisor and divided so for example 76 divided by 2 convert into binary we will get the reminders okay 100 zero, zero. okay so remaining all partial finally we should give the get the values until it reaches zero okay so that is the ultimate idea behind the division everybody know it is a binary division how it smooth the values to one level to another level okay so this is a typical flow chart for that the unsigned binary division is always more complex than um, unsigned uh, multiplication because here we need adder Divisor, dividend, m, q, and count. Okay, how many times we did the operation? Very important thing you have to check is uh, we are moving. There is a, a adder value, divisor, adder minus m to the adder. This is here only we are verifying in the third step. And fourth step, if condition will start. If your adder is less than zero. Yes, that means you are going to complete, you are uh, going to get the answer. Okay. Or no, again you have to focus on the dividend. Okay. Then increase the count. Finally, the count is reached zero. Okay. Yes, and okay. the quotient will be in Q okay, in dividend and remainder will be in A in adder. If it is not count equal to not zero, then you have to continue the process. Shift left, okay. then check a less than zero. Continue the process until the count reaches zero. Okay. How will we do for uh, real numbers? A number with fraction. It is real is nothing. It's a fractional point okay 2.6 9.6 so these are called uh, real numbers we used to say we have floating point unit fpu in your computer floating point unit okay these are uh, variable okay and it will change in the binary form so 2 power 3 plus 2 power 0, 2 minus 1 plus 2 power 3 equals 9.625, the value for the binary, okay, 1001, 1010, okay. So this is a very simple example for a computer logic, how the floating point will work. We have to divide, so two sections, so sign of the significant value you are using and biased exponent and significant so this is the syntax for a fpu floating point unit will have three concepts please remember significant bit 8 bits for biased and 23 bits for significant okay. so 0 to 24 and 8 bits remaining 8 bits Okay, so 32 bit okay. either it's maybe a plus or minus okay. misnomer it's the value which we are going to convert into the exponential this point position okay. so this is a typical example how the values will work okay. start from uh, the 8 bit and 23 bits okay. you can see here a simple example for um, a floating point example. The first one is zero, significant bit, which is going to identify either it's plus or minus. You can see for 1.1, it is positive. So it starts from zero okay? and multiply by two power one zero one zero zero. So for identifying your uh, floating point bit. If it is negative, it will be start from one and bias the exponent okay, and significant. Uh, okay. So this is a simple way of representing how a floating point unit will give the answer for you. If you write a program in C, programming for uh, finding average of uh, marks, okay, 
it will work like this one okay so so another concept is signs for floating point that is called as mantis of stored in two's complement okay and exponent is in excess or bias notation and excess bias is maximum is 128 and 8 bit exponent field and pure value range from 0 to 255 okay that is the value range is 255 0 to 255 Exactly, it is 256. And subtract to get the correct value. And range is start from minus 128 plus 27. These things are understanding of your computer. Whether it is integer or maybe a float or it is a character or it is a double. So this is a way how computer will understand. And normalization is another technique where we are going to that is MSB that is maximum significant bit that is adjusted okay, to the Mantis of that is rounded by one okay. since it's always one there is no need of storage okay, because uh, the value of MSB is always one and LSB always zero okay. and floating point ranges start from they start us from 32 bit number. Okay. And accuracy is always uh, about six decimal places. Okay, we can uh, run up to six decimal places. This is a floating point ranges in a computer for a 32 bit. It, it will be a, a plus or minus 2 power 56. Okay. And how these floating point numbers have the architectures that is expressible numbers two's complement integers start from minus 2 power 31 to 2 power minus 31 minus these are called as expressible two's complement integers and another concept is floating point numbers start from negative overflow and they end with positive overflow in between we have expressible negative numbers and positive numbers the balancing concept is zero. The zero is, is always the balanced. Either it's one side is negative, another side is positive. Okay. But expressible integers have the different one. So one is uh, uh, in between it is zero balancing number. A okay, number line it may be two power thirty one minus one or minus two power thirty one. How the density of floating point number will work? We can see up to start from 0 n, 2 power n, and 4 power n. Okay. This is a, uh, how it is closed and how it is uh, evolved at the time period. Okay. Start from minus 2 and 4, 4 power n. Okay. So we have standards for this floating point FPU operation. The IEEE 754, that is FPE unit, floating point unit. It may be 32 or 64 bit standard. Okay. So, this is an example uh, or general syntax format for single format, double format. Uh, in, in C programming, you have studied integer, float, double. It's normal float, which have 8 bits and 23 bits of fraction and biased exponent. Okay. Double format, which have biased exponent 11 bits and fraction is 32 bits. That much long, okay. And floating point arithmetic, we have uh, addition and subtraction, okay. And finally, it is giving the normalized result. This is the floating point addition subtraction flow chart. Okay. It is uh, going to do some complex operation for uh, real numbers. All the real numbers. Only thing you have to remember is the first part, the addition, okay. So, which is going to verify the exponents are equal or not. The exponents are equal, then it will be adding. Or again, it will be return the value to the change of sign. Okay. So, similarly, we have the another part is called as uh, subtraction. Okay. So, if you want to do subtraction, 
here the check is there if significant be equal to zero okay then it is uh, it will assign zero and it will return the value to the memory okay the main memory so finally we will be getting the answer so another last part the, the, the third level in the floating point addition and subtraction all the results are normalized okay normalized to some rounded value normalization everybody know so that is 10.1 normalized to 10 or 10.7 normalized to 11 okay so this is the last part of floating point addition and subtraction so first part verifying or converting your value changes of uh, uh, sign and finding the exponent and finding the significant bit it's a significant bit everybody know so you can see the sign bit okay. the sign either it's a plus or minus or a fraction so finally it will be moved to the normalization counter okay the other part is uh, floating point arithmetic we have uh, multiplication and division okay. check for zero add and subtract and multiply divide significant watch the sign and you have to check the sign normalize and round the value and finally the result will be stored in the double length so this is a flowchart for that the first step add and subtract exponents okay add subtract exponent if exponent overflow I report the overflow or multiply the signals normalize round very simple very simple compared to a floating point addition and subtraction multiplication is only have four steps add the exponents check the exponent value and multiply the significant bit the normalize and round it okay so division also similar steps okay the only uh, difference is okay here we have to add bias here you have to subtract the bias okay here addition in division you have to do addition there multiplication you have to do subtraction remaining all same that you are reading styling chapter 9 and you have to check the i triple e sound 54 on i triple website okay. so this is all about today topic which we discussed is uh, arithmetic arithmetic operation okay, of uh, alu unit how arithmetic logic unit is having the functions different functions how it is works okay a LE itself a separate unit okay but how the operations are done in different way in a binary form so signed unsigned the floating point f v okay and subtraction multiplication divisions the real numbers okay. so all this all this calculation is done in a arithmetic and logic unit. today what we discussed is only alu inside ailu many things are there there is a mathematic processor which is having a co-processor okay, maybe maybe like i triple standard uh, they have a separate ftu floating point unit okay for doing the floating point calculation so right so this is a unit one chapter two so what we discussed is uh, computer arithmetic addition subtraction multiplication how computer is does this is a way please go and refine and dig more today tomorrow we'll uh, do some activity regarding this okay so today whatever we studied is only theory you have to practice more so remember the flow chart please draw the diagrams i already told co is the subject where we have lot of diagrams hardware circuits flow charts okay you must remember and unit one is very 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 easy unit you have you can score very good mark if more questions are asked from unit one unit one is nothing registers and arithmetic the computer both are you studied in um, dld i hope so so this concept you already studied in um, dld you only have to remember Boots algorithm for multiplication, 
and flow charts for uh, addition subtraction division okay these these are the important question in this topic okay so tomorrow we'll discuss uh, some more uh, new concepts and uh, some activity almost time is 11:50 okay yeah okay so uh, see you on tomorrow